Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to slow it way down and go back in time to the 1820s. And my pretty little baby that you see here. My mom found actually in an antique store in Louisville. Just in a ball with other antique clothes. Including Mima, which is very cool by the way. As for this dress, she is between roughly 1825 to 1830. My personal like hard estimation is probably like 1827. Based off of a couple hallmarks. Her sleeve size, the waistline shape, and the skirt shape. It's not as extreme as the 1830s, but it's getting really close. This dress from the Met Museum, you can see it's very, very similar in construction, color, shape as my dress. They've dated this to the 1820s. This portrait of this lovely lady is mid to late 1820s here. And both of these dresses from LACMA. Again, same sleeve shape, same basic bodice shape, same pattern. Now, the one thing about this dress, it is not an arsenic drink green dress, guys, okay? It is actually a silk that has been dyed yellow with a blue over dye over top of it. You can see yellow coming through where the blue dye has not been color fast. From water, also I have a horror story that involves water and it's terrifying. There were also green dresses that survived in the past, just like this one that you see here. This is from the 16th century. It was green. So if you're worried about it being arsenic green, it's not. I'm perfectly safe. I could eat it if I wanted to. I'm just not going to because that's kind of gross, right? Let's get into construction of this baby. She is made up of four pieces total, two back pieces and two front pieces in the silk. This side piece here that looks like a side piece is actually not a side piece. It is actually just trim to give the illusion of the side piece. Yeah, here, look, see, flippy flappy. Look at that flippy flappy. It's fake, it's not real. It's amazing. The front actually is two pieces in silk, but one piece in the lining. So this little dart here is actually just taken to help shape the gown around the neck and the bosom. So that's all that they did. This construction is super duper basic, very, very simple. The lack of shaping in the garment leads me to believe, also the measurements, it leads me to believe that this dress is actually for a very young woman, a teenager, etc. The darts are also one of my favorite construction points here because they're taken from the outside, pinched and folded over, and then just backstitched on top into place with these teeny tiny back stitches and then the lining is just fell down so you have this nice like decorative element with the stitching of the dart but it's also so much easier to do instead of just like the modern way of like pinching turning it inside out etc so you can see what it looks like in the waistband here you can see how the lining the dart lining works out but this is also a fantastic segue into the waistband of this dress oh look at that slow so the waistband is two pieces cut on the straight of grain. The lining piece is just folded over and then hem stitched or felt stitched, whatever you want to call it, into place against the lining. And then the silk waistband is stitched on the other side. So the bodice is actually sandwiched in between the two layers. So what this means is that the waistband was placed on the body during a fitting so that way we have the right proportion to the silhouette because this is important. Then the waistband on the outside is actually just back stitched in the place using those same tiny back stitches that you see in the darts. And then yeah, the lining here is just felled over top of it. Then the bottom of these, they're actually just kind of left raw. They're folded up and pressed and that's it. They should be attached to the skirt but they're not for whatever reason. The back of this spot is closed with hooks and eyes that were spaced out about one inch to 2.54 centimeters apart. And there's about a one inch overlap in the back of the bodice here for closure. The hooks and eyes don't survive, but we do see the shadows of them and the scarring from the stitching. Look at that. Oh, so good. So the piping you can see was done where very tiny running stitches were holding the pipes, the piping into place and then the raw edge of the piping was folded under and stitched down to the lining to help create that finished look. And it makes it very, very clean and helps give a very polished finish to the neckline. As for the sleeves, they are piped and then gathered at the top like you see here. So the sleeves are backstitched into place and then overcast stitch. These sleeves have been redone a couple of times because there's a whole bunch of 
different types of thread in the arm's eye, but the original stitching, very nice tight back stitches and then overcast, which is frankly, if you've watched any of the other unboxing videos or antique clothing videos that I have on my channel, you will see that in all of them. There are ties at the shoulder seam at the start of the sleeve, as well as another tie on the inside of the sleeve. These were used to hold the arm poofs into place to help hold the sleeves out to their fashionable shape. One sleeve has the original linen tape and then the other sleeve has been altered at a later date with a twill tape and that one actually is stitched in place so that sleeve is like kind of poofy and the other sleeve isn't poofy. The sleeves are also unlined, which I think is a really great addition and it makes sense at this point in time because once they get super big in the 1830s and late 1820s, you can't really line those without it becoming way too thick and way too bulky and just really hard to wear. The seams of the sleeves are piped as well as the wrist and the wrist actually was open at one point in time, but then someone later on went and closed up this wrist slit with that very questionable black thread that frankly I think looks way too modern, but that's neither here nor there. You can see the raw edges of the wristlet being whipped close. I really love the shape of the sleeve. I think it's very elegant. Perfect for this time period. It's starting to grow. It's starting to expand, but it's really just not insane yet. It's not crazy big yet. It's a really fantastic shape. Let's move on to the skirts. Now, I don't really have too much to say about the skirts because they are so, so simple. They're, they're not over the top in any way, shape, or form. They have their separate waistband. This is made out of just a plain brown linen or cotton material. I'm not actually 100% sure. I think it's linen. And then the raw edge of the skirt has been folded over and then there's been a running stitch gone through all of the parts of the skirt and that has been gathered up and then whipped to the waistband. The waistband's completely separate. And you can see here, the edge of the waistband was finished, the buttonhole, and also that seam allowance of the skirt fabric. The skirt is unlined, it's just the silk, and also, can we talk about how cute that button is? That is literally the cutest button of all time, and you can fight me for it, because it is adorable, and I love it. You can also see a little alteration there that was done at some point in time with that weird black thread. So here's the, the overlap, the seam allowance of the skirt. You can see that it's been overcast to help protect that raw edge from fraying, even though frankly it doesn't really need it. That silk is really good and it doesn't fray, but you can see how big that seam allowance is. also see that the skirt had been taken up at some point in time because this is scarring from the original stitch point. So the skirt was about three or four inches longer originally than where it is now. They shortened it at some point in time. It closes in the center back, matches up with the bodice opening. And this is my favorite thing about the skirt. That is the piping. So they had the piping go down and then loop back up. And so that little bit of wool yarn there, that actually helps protect and reinforce that opening so it doesn't tear at the seam point. Now the panels are made up of five, 18 and a half, about 48 centimeter wide silk panels. It's just selvage to selvage. There's no shaping whatsoever. They're just rectangles and they are done in a really nice fine running stitch. I could not find any evidence of a back stitch. I think they're just nicely running stitched together and it's fantastic. As for the hem, this is really cool. So this is wool and the, so the bottom of the skirt is just bound in this wool fabric that has some really cool mending on it here. And then on the underside, there's this coarse brown cotton that acts as like a stiffening layer interfacing. What this is gonna do is protect the hem of the skirt, but also provide a lot of body to help hold the skirt out in that kind of growing fashionable bell-shaped look and appearance, which I think is fantastic because this dress is silk, it's beautiful, but you know what? This is an everyday garment. This is not a fancy outfit. This is something that would have been worn by a normal person and it's not fancy. It's a great example of a simple, beautiful, nicely made dress from this era. It's fantastic day wear and I just love it. And I'm so thrilled I've been able to share it with you all today. I hope that you've enjoyed this little exploration of this dress. And
know more about this dress, get even more construction details, more b-roll, more footage, head on over to my Patreon account where I have my delicious details tier where I will take all of this construction information, I will put it into a printable PDF that you can reference, as well as creating a much longer, more in-depth, very aesthetic, pleasing video of all this footage. I hope you all have a marvelous rest of your week and I'll see you all next week with a new video. Bye!